uh, hi everyone welcome back let's see a couple of more questions on javascript interview so my focus is to cover only the primary questions i cannot cover how a lot of questions there can be thousand two thousand questions can be there but what are random questions which you may face i mean these are the questions which generally being asked in javascript interview questions okay what is if you block immediately invoking functional expression right this is uh, most popular questions so to create a module pattern we what we do what we do we put the code and we put the code inside the if we block and this is how the if we block syntax look like and what actually the if we blocks do and what is the advantage when you put any uh, your code block or any javascript code inside it then it prevents the collision of whatever the variables you have declared inside it with uh, the outer scope i mean whatever the variables defined in the global scope will not get conflict with the the scope defined inside it so it's like a wall of china you have created an uh, outside of your code and this is uh, privately scoped right and this is kind of a function which is actually calling itself so you don't need to call this code of logic it will be get called automatically so you can just keep your code here what is event delegations uh, one of the hot met methodologies in javascript world is event delegation so what happens like whenever you do the dom event in any of the node that event bubbles up like dom event i mean on click on change on key up on key down all these kind of dom events when you event triggered on dom node it bubbles up to the outer node elements right so what we can do is uh, event delegation allows you to avoid adding events to the listener to the specific node okay you don't need to handle this event here instead the event listener is added to the one of the parent okay you consider you have ll ul and li uh, unordered list you have okay you wanted to apply a click event on a particular uh, li node instead of doing that you can just put a click event or whatever the change event on the ul tag which is the immediate parent of all the li tag and you already know that whenever event is being applied on the li it will bubble up to the parent node so it's better to handle that on the parent node so event listener can be added to the parent the event listener analyze bubbles up and find the once the event is bubble up right you are actually handling at the ul tag at that point you can find the uh, the index of child element and can do the particular calculation okay what is this and uh, how this object works so it's actually a good question and people most uh, mostly gives wrong answer that uh, this gets initialized like this like that okay so whenever we are using the new keyword keyword while calling the function then brand new object is being being created and that points to the this object okay if we apply call or bind so this is when you are actually calling a constructor with a new object new hello using constructor in that case you are actually creating the 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 new object in that point this object points that newly created object when we call when we do apply call or bind are used to call or create a functions this inside the function is passed as an argument in that case so because call apply bind bind we used to actually bind a function with a particular object call and apply to override the context of this object inside a function uh, consider that if a function is called as a method such as object dot method this is the object that function is a property of so this is a this is a very basic okay uh, what else we have is uh, whenever you create a function right and you uh, assign some variables this dot hello equal to something and then you are calling uh, a constructor creating the object of that function then this will point to the properties defined inside the function similarly when you are creating the objects right and uh, that object in that object this object points to the properties defined under that uh, object it can be a function it can be a variable so in the functions uh, in, in if the function in es2015 is arrow function it, it ignores all the rules above received uh, i mean i will not go to theoretical concept here but you might have seen that what is the advantage of using arrow function arrow function is providing the lexical this binding what it is doing it is allowing you to access the immediate parent scope and in this way you are able to access this object inside the arrow function right so these are the the ways of uh, doing uh, using this object okay how the prototypal inheritance works so 
this is uh, good questions how the function prototypal inheritance works so one uh, theoretical answer you can give is consider you created a function hello okay and then function hello dot prototype equal to hello sorry hello dot prototype dot say hello equal to function you have added some prototype property in that function now how you can inherit that so you created a, a function hello too and you wanted to inherit the prototypal properties defined in the function hello how you can do that hello two dot prototype equal to hello one dot prototype so this is how you are actually inheriting the the properties defined prototype properties defined in the hello one inside hello two so this is extremely common javascript interview questions all javascript object has a prototype properties right that is reference to the another object when properties exist on that object if the property is not found then the javascript engine looks at the objects prototype so this is actually it's also talking about the prototype chain because the object will be created from somewhere because every object in javascript is actually extending the capital o object or you might be creating the object from another object in that case the prototype property it will when you try to access some property which is not available uh, then if property is not found in on that object then javascript engine looks at the objects prototype okay and the, the prototypes prototype and so on so it's like you are keep doing a chaining to access that property available in that okay uh, inheritance works in the same way you are we are now we are doing classical inheritance in the es6 classes where class a extends class b class c extend class b but earlier we used to do the inheritance with the functions function a was extending the properties of function a using prototypal inheritance we are actually accessing the prototype properties of function a and assigning those properties in function b okay what is closer and how and how you would use them so closures has a different uh, parameters closure is just uh, another example of accessing the immediate outer scope so you, there is a global property is defined and you are accessing that global property inside that function that is also example of closure or uh, simple you have written the nested functions function a is returning function b function a is accepting a as an argument function b is accepting b as an argument so when you are calling the function a by passing some argument then in, the, in that case function a is returning the function b even the function a has returned but the value of the the parameter which is passed in function a is persisted in the closure of the inner function okay so i, I will just directly go to the terms closures are the functions that have access to the outer functions variable okay simple you are accessing the global scope variable in, from the function it's also a closer example the inner function is able to access the immediate outer scope variables uh, that is also example of closure okay for each and map uh, what is the uses map always map is uh, immutable map doesn't change anything on the existing array it will always give you the new array in the result for each is used for iterations uh, you just do iteration on the element and do something with the index but you are not changing the existing array you, you can actually generate the new values uh, new things by iteration so it is just like plain for loop you are doing uh, what is the typical use of anonymous functions okay good, good example is if we block in the if we block whatever we do that is anonymous function because it's this function is doesn't have any name or anonymous function when you are actually assigning the function with some variable var x equal to function that is also anonymous function or set timeout right which is having callback it doesn't have any name so this is this anon this is anonymous function this is anonymous function we have okay so they can be used in the if we block to encapsulate some code within the local scope right uh, and as a callback that is used once and does not need to be used anywhere else uh, because always in the callback function we do not give the name of the function we just write function and uh, the body what is the difference between call and apply another good question for the interview both call and apply are used to invoke functions and the first parameter will be used uh, of this within the function as the value of this within the function so second argument will be the argument comma separated argument when you are passing the multiple argument in second argument then you you will use apply as an array but if you have one or two argument then you can just do the call so what we do uh, like array dot call and we are passing null so here either you can pass the this object this context if you are passing this context means you wanted to override 
the definition of these values with uh, with this so call and apply is used to override the definition of this context inside the function so consider you are using this dot a plus this dot b their values might be something else but if you wanted to override the values then add dot call this comma you can pass both the arguments so this will override the context uh, in this object so call takes comma separated argument uh, as next argument while apply takes an array as an argument as next argument an easy way to remember this c for call uh, comma separated and a for apply for array arguments uh, what is ajax uh, ajax actually when we used to write the jquery before that we used to write the plain ajax call to get the data from the backend so this is how we used to create xml http request and uh, we used to just uh, open the connection for that url and we used to send so this xhr request for that XHR request, we actually check the on ready state. Once the server status is 4 and uh, uh, status code is 200, that means we got the data from the APIs and then we can just assign that to some DOM log. But this is the AJAX code we used to write. Now we have all the other libraries which are actually replacement of this kind of code. Okay, what is JSONP? We have, uh, we have XHR request. So JSONP is a method completely used to bypass the cross origin policies in the web browser because ajax request uses cross domain they are uh, follow the cross uh, cross origin policy means your front end is on origin x then they cannot get the values or data from the origin y cross origin policy so this is the browser restrictions they will put and this will be overridden until unless you send the header from the apis or from the backend other thing is you can use a JSONP to override this cross domain policies and allow your browser to talk to a cross domain. Okay, that's it. In next video, we'll cover more questions.